you play in the stock market. To a lot, that's a daunting thing. That's like space <laughs> speaking yes. Mandarin, right? That's what? But when I say the mysteries of the universe can be reconciled with mathematics, mm -hmm. with formulas, constants. There's constants and formulas that are in everything, in equations, right? Yep. And from the smallest of the small to the biggest of the big, a uh, human's fingerprint is identical to if you slice open a tree. Tech. Yes, sir. Been peeping you out for a while on the internet. Um, and I'm always trying to like see if I can like see a person, who they are, right? right? Mm -hmm. But you don't put out the kind of content where I can gauge you, you know what I'm saying? So we had dinner last night and we really got to talk and chill. And I fuck with you, like for real, like in, in a real way, man, because I gotta be honest, man, like I'm a very skeptical person of people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a classic New Yorker. You don't trust motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I scan it. I'm not impressed by anything. Mm -hmm. But now nah, I, I really resonate with the things that you were talking about. Um, you enlightened me to some things. And the way that you play the stock market is you approach it with a very spiritual, esoteric type of approach, which I can appreciate because that's how I approach life. How did you, why are you like that? That's a good question, bro. And First of all, let me say this. I rock with you as well, man, because same thing, I don't trust a lot of people. Yeah, there's a little weird people out there, man, yeah. so I don't trust a lot of people, and it's because of how I move. Mm -hmm. For me, how you do anything is how you do everything. Facts. Right? That's how I feel. And for me, everything is connected, mm -hmm. including the stars, including, I mean, even how a person walks, how mm -hmm. a person writes, it's in them. It's, it's something that you can pick apart, right? Mm -hmm. So I pick apart everything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, man, it was with the stock market the same way. I said, listen, I'm like, if it's people that make up the stock market, I'm like, okay, well, what do people do? Mm. And I'm like, okay, and what controls people? Right. And from that point, I started realizing that things like the moon, things like, I mean, even getting into what we talked about last night was like, hey, greed, fear, emotions, mm. that's what drives people. Right. So I'm like, all right, let me see how I can pick this apart. Right. And when I started making money from it, I go, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. So, yeah, bro, that's that's essentially how I got started with it. All right, so let's let's get into this mm -hmm. nitty gritty. So you are you 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 play the stock market. Mm -hmm. You play it like LeBron play basketball, <laughs> right? Legend tells it. You know, very successful. Mm -hmm. We're in one of your careers right now. Mm -hmm. It's fire, Puerto <laughs> Rico. It. Right on the beach. This is dope. You know, um, what would you say you bring in annually from just your stock market plays? Or is that something you feel? No, no, that's, okay. that's totally fine. So I have different accounts where some are trading accounts mm. where we're in and out a couple days, a couple weeks. Mm. We may pull in six figures, seven figures on a good year from day trading or swing trading. Right. right. No more longer. No, no holds longer than two, three weeks. Right? Okay. I don't like holding too long. Then you have maybe a one or two year hold, which is what we call leaps. Mm -hmm. Leap options, you buy option contract, because I'm mostly options. You buy option contract, two year expiration date, two and a half year, and you hold it. Mm -hmm. Those might do 500%. Mm -hmm. So if I got 200K over there, mm -hmm. you don't put all the money in. Let me just right. say that. Right? If you got 200K in that account, you might play with 30,000. Mm -hmm. That's it. So 500K, or excuse me, 500% on 30,000, you might make another six, you know, good, healthy six figure, 150K. Mm. Then long term, that's where you make your big money mm, because okay. you can hold four or five years and you can right. let stuff really move up. So, I mean, if I'm gonna hold something super long, I can make, I make millions of dollars that way, right? Yeah. Because it's the safest. Right. I don't have much risk and I can mm. sleep at night. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. There's right. nothing like having six figures on the line and you have a short expiration date to make that money. Right, like hit. right. I've been there, we talked about this, yeah. I've lost a million dollars trading yeah. that way. Right, 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 right. So for me, all of my big money, I go out. Mm. It's just safer, safer that way. What's your, what's your win percentage <laughs> so now, for, now? So right now, we talking 92, 93%. Okay, that's and impressive. And that's verified via my stock alerts group. Mm. Like people can go in there and just see that by right. itself, right? Um, one of the things we do, and we talked about this, and I'm sure you're gonna go there, but one of the things we do is we track the weather patterns, we track other things outside of just technical analysis, and right. that's what helps to improve that win rate. Okay, so that's interesting. So you track astrology, mm -hmm. right? The moon, mm -hmm. all of these things, 
in regards to the stock market. Are you unique in this, or is that a strategy that others employ as well? It's definitely a strategy. I'm not the first one to do it. Okay. Most definitely not. Okay. However, you rarely hear the small fish mm -hmm. talking about that, right? right? What I mean by small fish, it's not a knock to anybody, but mm -hmm. if you get on the internet and you try to search your average person who's trading the stock market, teaching the stock market, they're not going to mention anything about mm -hmm. weather patterns. They're not going to mention anything about sunspots. They're right. not going to mention about the moon. Right. They don't do that, right? right? So what I've acquired as far as the knowledge when mm -hmm. it comes to astrology, weather patterns, and things like that, mm -hmm. this comes from billionaires. Right. Um, I had two billionaires teach me a few things, mm -hmm. right? One guy was named Charlie out of Nashville. He was uh, when I was a personal trainer right. 14 years ago. Yeah. He was actually a client of mine. Mm -hmm. He started me down that track. The reason why, so JP Morgan has a saying, astrology is not for millionaires, it's for billionaires. Mm -hmm. So when I got into it, I was like, well, shh, I'm trying to be a billionaire, so what's right, up? Right, right, right. <laughs> so that's what made me get into it and stick with it long term. Mm, yeah. And when I saw it working, time over time over time, crash after crash, mm. I was, I'm, I'm hooked. Right, <laughs> so right, I ain't right, going right. Back. That's crazy. That's crazy. I would get into the nuance on it, but I'm not because the game is to be sold, not to be told. And one thing that I, you have to recognize and honor is the fact that you taken all the big risks, you've taken the hits, you figured it out, you created a lane, right? Mm -hmm. You become good. wildly successful time and time again. So you're in position, uh, you're qualified to teach people. Absolutely. You're qualified to help people make money, mm -hmm. right? And I respect that because, you know, I do the same thing in my, in my space, right? You know, I'm, yeah. I started out as a personal trainer like yourself. Mm -hmm. And bro, I, I was burnt out <laughs> yes. before I went online. <laughs> then I got online. Then I figured out like, yo, this is so much better, right? I can help way more people, Absolutely. right? And make way more money, right? So yeah, I'm gonna charge people for this information. Of and, and it does well for me. And my students are making a lot of money, you know? So, and I know that's the same with what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, they need to <laughs> sign up, yep. you know, Absolutely. go through the protocol. Because here's the thing, people will spend, four, six years in college, spending a lot of money, way more than what they would spend with someone like yourself or myself, mm -hmm. and come out and can't get a job. Right. Or just get a job. Mm -hmm. Get a job. <laughs> yeah, get a You're job. a job. <laughs> You're paying to learn how to get a job. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. They got me fucked up with that. See, I go about a just over broke mentality. That's what that is. That's so, what a job is, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And listen, like, people out there listening with jobs, I don't want to discourage them. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's a bad thing. Mm. You know, this is what you, we've all been taught. And a job is not inherently a, a death certificate or slavery. I think a lot of jobs are slavery, yes. right? Yep. Because you gotta look at it like this. You got people, you're getting up, you go into a job that you don't really like, it's not your dream job. Mm -hmm. They're drip feeding you, they're just giving you just enough, right? Yep. You take that money, you go back to your apartment that you don't, it's not your dream home. Yep. You pay rent to sleep, rest up, Yes. to go back to that job, to get money, to go pay rent, <laughs> to sleep, to go back to that job. For real. It's a vicious cycle. It's the worst kind of hamster wheel, and people are afraid to hop off of it, you know? And I was, I'm not gonna say I was ever like that, but there was a time that I did get a job, mm -hmm. and, you know, starting from scratch, and when it was time for me to, like, do my own thing, I was a little nervous. Mm -hmm. And I was barely getting anything from that job, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I understand the, the psychological conditioning that takes place when someone is in that space, right? Yep. So, but what we're trying to do, people like us, is teach people like, look, it's absolutely not necessary. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I'm not educated, right. but I'm educated. You know what I mean? Bingo. And what, what I love about what you're doing is someone, fuck, I'm saying fuck college. Mm -hmm. Unless Same. you're trying to be a doctor, Same. lawyer, or something like that, something where you need these specific the specific training, fuck college, because they can go through your course, they can go through mine, they can go through other people I know for very specific things and learn how to make money mm -hmm. an endless amount in that space Absolutely. in a shorter period of time. Absolutely. And honestly, man, I've told people time and time again, I know doctors, I know lawyers who are hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt to make $100,000 a year, 150 a year. Mm -hmm. And it's like slave mentality, yes, but two, you are kind of buried by that debt that you can't you can't break away. Right. It's, it's pretty much it's unsustainable if you ask me mm -hmm. because especially now you need a hundred thousand just to survive without yeah. debt. Right. You add the school debt, you add other things on top of that. You essentially are paycheck to paycheck. And not just that, but 
the things that you're learning, let's say you go into school for a marketing degree, mm -hmm. which is crazy to me. <laughs> Four years down the line, man, the market is completely different than when you started. Yes. The market changes monthly now. Mm -hmm. We live in an information age, a tech age. <laughs> like, you know, my sales channels are every social media platform, email, everything, right? Mm -hmm. SMS, and everything changes monthly. Absolutely. So we gotta stay on top, we gotta ride the wave, mm -hmm. you know? But people are digging their heels in because mm -hmm. that's what you're taught to do. Like, you go to college, first one in my family to go to college, <laughs> like, who cares? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. My, we don't have, in my family at least, a legacy. Well, black people in general don't have a legacy of education. Right. And I used to look at that like, fuck, this is fucked up. But now I'm kind of glad mm -hmm. because we're not afraid to be creative and do our Thanks. own thing. Yep. You know, and, and you see it. People like mm -hmm. yourself, like myself, my man, he, he off camera right now. But people who figure out mm -hmm. a lane, have, we have the same mental capacity as them, if not even more even robust. More a more yep. fertile imagination, mm -hmm. right? And we're out here <laughs> creating legacies. Absolutely. You know what I'm and saying? And we play more, for me especially, both of us, we're willing to play more, a little more risky because yeah. we've been at the bottom, right? Yeah. You see, I see a lot of the guys who might have raised, been raised in like middle class homes. They lose their job or the stock market crashes, they jumping off buildings. They kill themselves. They kill themselves. That's right? crazy. Stock market crash, I'm like, shit, okay, we gotta go back to peanut butter jelly, okay, shit. Yeah. We'll make it work. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a big th <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. We, we do, right, exactly. seriously. Yeah. It's like another adventure, okay, cool. I did it before, I get back here. So, life, life, people gotta understand that life is not a, like this. Right. It's a roller coaster. So, get ready Absolutely. for it. Get ready for it and en embrace it. Yep. Because if you don't, life is gonna suck for you, you know, because life is literally what ma we make it. Mm -hmm. The human mind, is the brain is the most advanced piece of technology there is. Absolutely. The smartest of the smartest cannot figure out all of the functions of the mind, right? We know more about the cosmos than the human brain, Absolutely. right? Which is fascinating. Um, but I'm gonna get into something we was kind of talking about last night when we were getting into fractals and we're getting into uh, constants and mathematics and formulas, right? Man, I would love for people to really understand mathematics a bit more Mm -hmm. right our people and you know i'm gonna do my part to make it real understandable and practical to them right because everything the mysteries of the universe hear what i say the mysteries of the universe that's everything mm -hmm. in the known universe mm -hmm. can be reconciled with mathematics absolutely now you play in the stock market to a lot that's a daunting thing that's like space <laughs> speaking yes. mandarin right this, what but when I say the mysteries of the universe can be reconciled with mathematics, mm -hmm. with formulas, constants. There's constants and formulas that are in everything, in equations, right? Yep. And from the smallest of the small to the biggest of the big, a human's fingerprint is identical to, if you slice open a tree, the identification of a tree, like the rings of a tree, right? Yep. Uh, we breathe out carbon monoxide Plants breathe it in, and it breathes out oxygen. We breathe oxygen. that in. Yep. And if you look at the, the, the respiratory system of a tree, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's identical to ours, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So you look at a crab nebula in space as an eyeball, right? Absolutely. Big to small, as above, so below, we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. These things, everything can be reconciled with math. Mm -hmm. You playing the stock market can be rec reconciled with math to All where right. you're winning at a 90-something percent I've heard people say 30 is good, 40 is good. You and know what I'm saying? It can be. I, I'll give those people, see, it's two ways of playing, and this is what I like, this is what I love about the mathematics. Okay. Of, because we do have a, a certain type of person that wants to be perfect and win everything. Yes. That's the hardest part of the market is taking mm -hmm. a loss, mm -hmm. right? And right. knowing you've got to take that loss, right? Right. So what I like to tell people is you can play with the mathematics of it and win on a 30% win rate overall. Right. Your wins have to be bigger than your losses. Mm -hmm. So for me, and I played that way before, that. right? I see that. Yeah. So I might lose out of 100 trades, I might lose 70 of them, mm -hmm. but, but I know when to runs. cut it. So I'm losing $100, $200, $500. Right. But when I win them 30 trades out of 100, yeah. 15K, 20K, right. 30K. Right. So my wins have been so much bigger than my losses that I still net net profit, mm -hmm. right? right? That's one way of playing. Right. And for me, most people should probably get used to that. Mm -hmm. Now, I've studied the hell out of this market to the point that I can tell you where the market is going short term 
and say, okay, I can bang out a 90% win rate, 93% win rate, because I've studied it so long. I've been trading over 10 years now, almost 11. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, and I go hard at this though. Right. It's not one of those passive things, like it's just, you know, I do it in my spare time. No, I go hard. Right. Right? I read the hell out of the books. I do all of the studies. I put hundreds of thousands of dollars into learning from different coaches. Right. I've done the work. So 93% does not come for somebody walking off the street. Mm -hmm. This is work. Right. <laughs> this is investment. Are you, what kind of, um, to a dedicated student of yours, what kind of win ratio could they be expecting? Easily 60% if you come mm -hmm. in and do the work. You know? right. um, and I, first thing I like to tell people, number one thing is you're going to lose. So right. before you start losing your money, you might as well go and trade paper. We call it paper trading. Right. Trade some fake money. Right? Yeah. Figure out what the market does because the market repeats itself. Because humans, mm -hmm. just like humans are predictable mm -hmm. to a certain extent, mm -hmm. the market's predictable. Right. Because guess what? The market is made up of humans. Right. Right? And when people say, well, it's mostly algorithmic trading, who made the fucking algorithm? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Humans. It follows a set of rules. Right. And if you know the rules that the humans made, mm -hmm. then you know what the market is supposed to do and how. Right. And that's how you win. Right, Easy. right, right. So, I had a question for you. Mm -hmm. How was your life, right? What's your life like? Um, I know you're married, mm -hmm. right? You have a family. Absolutely. So, what is your life like? What do you, what is your purpose now? Mm -hmm. What are you living for? Man, that's a dope, it's a loaded question, but it's a dope question. Um, honestly, man, as a, as a married man, a father, and someone who's always wanted to see people win, that's how I got started. You know, a lot of people don't know. I used to be 320 pounds, mm -hmm. right? And that's before I got 6'3", 6'4". Right. 320 pounds, 5'8". Wow. Big crazy. chunky kid, that's right? That's crazy. Thick. Right? Two C's. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I lost all the weight. Um, that's what, you know, I went vegan, whatnot. Lost all the weight. Got rid of the diabetes. Got rid of everything. And that clicked for me to help other people. Because mm -hmm. I saw our people killing themselves, right? right. Well... After, you know, the whole thing plays out while I'm a trainer and it's time for me to retire, I made, I mm. made millions of dollars helping people heal themselves. Mm. I said, okay, I've done my, my due diligence and my justice as being a trainer and helping people mm. heal. But the one thing I heard was people everywhere, I can't afford organic food. I can't mm. afford the, the good, healthy foods. Right. I'm like, so all of y'all broke? Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Let me teach you how to make some money. Right. Because the number one thing I did as a trainer and what I wanted to get out of a trainer is to work with higher clientele mm -hmm. so that I can learn from them. Right. And you, you'll probably appreciate this more than anybody. I got around these rich people who could afford a personal trainer. Yeah. And that was $100 an hour. Right. So I got around these rich people and I saw how undisciplined they were. Mm -hmm. And I said, you work millions of dollars mm -hmm. and you ain't got no discipline? Mm -hmm. I'm coming to take your lunch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, because yeah. for me, how you get up here is the discipline, mm -hmm. right? How you stay here is the discipline. Right. Stock market, discipline. Mm -hmm. Marriage, discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, we say dick yeah. discipline, right? So yeah. all of that stuff plays into the discipline role. So I said, okay, I'm going to lean into this discipline, mm -hmm. and I'm going to prove and show people how you really do this shit. Right. So that's really where it started, man, and that just turned me into, so when people ask me who I am, I'm a disciplined man. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is, and that's how the success came. That's how I got the beautiful wife. That's how I have all of that stuff because it's the discipline. That's really mm -hmm. it. Yeah, nah, discipline is that simple. Like, <laughs> that's a formula in life, an equation mm -hmm. that always wins, like staying consistent and disciplined. Absolutely. And um, even like me personally, like I, I made decisions in my life earlier that were not the best, mm -hmm. the things that I was doing for money, but I was still disciplined. Absolutely. You see the old me, I was in shape. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, so uh, that's, that's something that I can attest to. And then when you have something very constant in your life that you can always mm -hmm. not fall back on, but it's always there. Man, people respect that, yep. you know? And um, that's dope. Uh, so you are you have a son or a daughter? A son. A son, mm -hmm. how old is he? Uh, he just turned a year now, yeah. He's here, alhamdulillah, that's dope. So what is life like now with a son? Like, what, what, has anything changed for you? Man, yeah, absolutely. That's the dopest part of my day, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I say that because you know, we've done the Lambos, you know, we buy, buy our mm. nice cars, we party, we go out with the girls, we do whatever. Nothing has topped raising that boy, mm. right? It's the best part of my day. So for me, it changed who I was. Like, I don't really care about the Lambos anymore. Mm. I don't really care about anything. Like, everything I do is wrapped around him, right? right? Mm. So when I wake up in the mornings, I know what time he wakes up, because I wake up before everybody. I beat right. the sun up, right? Yeah. I do my workouts, whatever, make sure I get in my work. And literally, from that time, my day revolves around him. 
Let me make sure baby boy wake up. Let me, you know, yeah. say good morning, yada, yada. That, for me, it's, it's the work. Mm -hmm. It's the work. Because, honestly, we don't put enough focus on our seed. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of us, yeah. I'll say that. Yeah. Right? That's my everything, bro. Right. That's my everything. So, for me, I put all the focus, all the love right there. All right. So, Tay, you sound like an awesome person, like a great Appreciate person. It. All right. What's the dark side of Tay? Of Tay? It can't be, you can't be this angelic, <laughs> this fucking perfect. Absolutely not. Is there, or like, like honestly, like, do you have flaws? Do you have things that you're trying to work on? Um, you know, what are some things that, that's not ideal right. about you? Man, that's dope. To um, you. For me, I, first of all, I believe in duality, polarities. So for every, you know, piece of good, there's a piece of bad. Mm -hmm. I think we all have that. For me, one of the things that I'm working on the most um, is love. Mm -hmm. Like, not just self-love, but more so love out to strangers, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm not that noble, mm -hmm. right? I might walk past a stranger. I might walk past somebody who may need help. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking to help. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I'm not looking to help, to be honest. And I'm working on that because mm -hmm. people help me through my journey, mm -hmm. right? And the reason why I'm not looking for help, because it's a little selfish. I'll be honest with you, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where that polarity comes in. But you're helping, you're helping a lot of people, though. Now, now. And, and it's mm -hmm. a work. So for me, mm -hmm. it's an ever-changing thing. It's an ever-growing thing. So at first, it was, hey, man, fuck what y'all talking about. Mm -hmm. Where, where's my money? What's in it for me? Right. right? And that's, it's always been that way, but I'm working on it. So for example, you'll see over my transitioning through teaching the stock market and teaching finance and teaching business, I've done more free stuff on YouTube just to mm -hmm. start helping people. Right. right. Because at first, it was like, no, I know I have a gift. I know mm -hmm. I can help you. Right. I don't care about all that free shit. You're going right. to pay me my worth or mm -hmm. you can get the fuck out of here, right? Yeah. And that, so for me, it was very selfish, mm -hmm. right? Very selfish. So I've been working on that, man, because I realized that I can help more people if I at least start them somewhere mm -hmm. and build them up yeah. to where they can invest and they can come in and, help, you know, get the next level. So right. that, that's definitely one of my, my areas, man, most definitely. Okay. So, so you said just like strangers. Yeah, I don't think that's necessary right. to help a stranger. You know what I mean? Right personally but you know to each their own i guess if you my thing is more like if i feel it yeah. if i feel compelled for whatever reason um because me personally I've, I've had people throughout the years reach out to me for help mm -hmm. and i used to just help mad people like for real and then i found myself helping like people that were pieces of shit <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> for real when i would like peel back the lid like wait what happened again yep. i keep probing 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 I'm like nah i'm good you know what i'm saying yep. and it's crazy but i've had people really like try to stab me in the back. Yeah. I oh, catch yeah. it and and chastise them and they still ask me for help. Yeah. It's like the level of desperation that some people have is is bizarre. You know, I'm the type of person that like I live ferociously. Mm -hmm. I live every day. Right. I live a lot every day. Mm -hmm. I live on 10. So, you know, figuratively speaking, I fight my sleep. Yeah. I mean, I'm always trying to like make sure I'm just I've done everything. I've talked to everybody. I've responded to this, responded to that, right? Reached out to these people. And so with that, I've encountered a lot of life and a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? And unfortunately, you know, you know, you raise a level of all the good people, but there's a lot of bad people you're gonna yeah. deal with too. Absolutely. And just strange people, man. And I, I kind of find find that life is really no rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the only, we are an elevated version of an animal, right? right? And animals, what's their rules? To eat, to sleep, to procreate, and to not die. That's right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And Absolutely. and what I find it that's humans too. Yeah. You know. Now, the more that we are separated from primitive living, and that's being poor and not having things, right. the more we're separated from that, the more elevated our one might say consciousness, but our level of civility right. is, right? You, you know, when you have resources, you, you're like, I should help people, yep. right? Yep. But when you don't have anything, you're not thinking about helping nobody. You're mm -hmm. taking something from somebody. You know you what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I guess I can't even be mad at it all. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because me personally, I've never been and I've never operated out of a, a, um, a mindset of a deficit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even though I've been in a deficit at times in my life. But I was so like, my, my brain is so like, my protection from that is to ignore it and act like it ain't really happening right. and act like I'm rich or act like I'm good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep, absolutely. So, and it's always got me right out of these deficits, you know? Mm -hmm. 
And um, I've had a couple in my life, but it never became me. Right. And then, you know, and I've had them, nobody around me knew that I was going through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I do notice that a lot of people, that's their reality, that's their comfort zone, mm -hmm. and they'll never escape it. Right. No matter how much you help them, you know? I agree. Yeah. I mean, you see it while you're trying to help. You see it when you're doing it. And to your point, I don't think we're supposed to help everybody, mm -hmm. right? The thing I'm really working on, if we had to quantify it or, or give it a name, would be survivor's remorse, mm -hmm. right? So for me, it's like, well, shit, I made it. And look at all of these people hurt, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and see, that's interesting, bro. I know that concept. Yeah. I don't relate to that at all. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I just, not that I don't care, mm -hmm. but I guess I don't care to an extent because right. look, the resources is here for everybody. Absolutely. <laughs> the information is here for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And then me being a person like you who teach people how to do these things, there's people that I know that have come to me and they're like, hey, tell me about that, what you're doing in this course, and I, I break it down. And they're in the space mm -hmm. and they won't even buy. Right. But they're struggling. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I don't care. Yep. You know, I'll tell you what I think it is for me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it depends, and this could be a flaw to some people. You know, mm. I call it a God complex. Mm. I think the survivor's remorse in me comes from the fact that it's like, no, I'm so much better than y'all. Mm. <laughs> you know, and that's the, the feeling, right? right? You're like, I'm so much better. I'm supposed to like, because what does God do? The, the average, you know, person who thinks God, you know, mm. he provides, he or she, depending on who you are, provides food, provides shelter, provides, right? right. And so for me, when you start to make these certain moves, these certain levels, you start to move and transform yourself into mm. something extra than you're normally used to being, you start feeling like that God. Like you mm. turn into that, that Elohim. But you, you, are, know. you are a God in your, in your reality, Absolutely. right? And I don't, think, I don't think that's a complex, right. you know? I think that society labels and comes up with these titles and bestows mm -hmm. it upon people to humble people Absolutely. so people don't really rise that great. Mm -hmm. When you look at the book of Genesis, right, and you really read it, you're like, what, what's really going on here, mm -hmm. right? So when, when it gets to the forbidden tree of good and evil, mm -hmm. right, don't eat of this right. knowledge mm -hmm. because you'll be conscious. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't want me to be conscious? Mm -hmm. I don't understand that, right. you know what I mean? And that right there, is an example of how this our society is mm -hmm. don't be listen to the mainstream media we're telling you what to think mm -hmm. here's the two candidates pick <laughs> one of these it's a democracy yes. democracy is you get to vote mm -hmm. here's the two what do you mean vote you just right. gave me two options right. you know what i'm saying there's a guy down the street that, that works at a library who's way more uh uh qualified, qualified to run to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. so it's like we live in a fallacy with these fake systems, mm -hmm. you know, me, how I see things is like, fuck right. all of these concepts that they've given us, I agree. fuck the status quo. Mm -hmm. And the things that I know me personally, the things that I was indoctrinated with, they're all wrong, mm -hmm. all wrong, yep. you know? And it's all to benefit them, mm -hmm. you know, these gatekeepers. And, you know, they're a little, it's interesting because they, their, their stronghold is getting weak now. You have people like, yeah, think, think about it. The richest people in the world used to be the oligarchs and the, the bankers, mm -hmm. the oil guys. Yep. Now it's engineers. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I love it. Absolutely. Mathematicians and shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I love where we're going. Um, you know, it's a it's an interesting time to be alive. And I was just like to be alive. You know what I'm saying? It's amazing. That's I wonder if people felt like this 200 years ago. Like, man, this is dope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They got the little primitive cars. And, <laughs> oh man, no AC, Flintstone. but they're like, yo, I can get there. But I'm sure this is what they felt, yeah. you know, because the nature of human is, the nature of man is to like, we adapt, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've been incarcerated and the first day is the, it's horrible. Right. Four days in, you're like, it's normal. Mm -hmm. It's like, how is this normal? But right. you, you're laughing, having jokes. I remember my first time in jail, I'm like, the fuck y'all laughing for? <laughs> what are y'all happy about? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, you know, humans adapt mm -hmm. so well. That's why we are, we kind of run shit, Absolutely. you know, as far as all yeah. of the animals, you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? I got a question for you that's kind of off subject. UAPs, what do you think about that? I don't know what that is. I'm one of those people, if I don't, if I don't know what it is, I'm gonna tell you, so I don't know what that is. Do you think, enlighten me. Do you think it's, uh, like, it's a new word for a UFO? Uh 
So okay. you haven't seen like Congress having hearings oh, yeah, about, it. Been hearing and about it. Okay. And they're they're saying like, yeah, we caught these what is it? Non human biological mm -hmm. uh pilots. Mm -hmm. I'm like <laughs> my nigga. Word. I mean, I'm gonna say this, man. So first of all, I, I don't watch really any news. Yeah. And it's a reason for that. When you watch the news and you trade the stock market, it distorts your mm. your decision making. Right. Because they say, oh, good news right here. And you're like, oh, we're bullish. Yeah. Or bad news, you go short. Right. Market's about to crash. So I don't watch the news because of that. So yeah. I've heard about it, you know, here and there. Mm. But my take on extraterrestrials and all this other stuff. One, if, if that's what they're pushing now, I think it's a, a distraction from something they're actually trying to do. Mm. Um, that's what we see in the stock market. Yeah. They tell you to look over here and they smack your ass with mm. this other hand, right? Facts. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think it's a, a distraction. Um, but am I arrogant enough to say we are the only fucking beings in all of this vastness? Absolutely not. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, I, so I don't think that they're coming out and giving the news that they're here, right? Yeah. Some other beings are yeah. here. I think, I think it's bullshit. <laughs> if, if they're saying it, yeah. And, I, and when I say it's bullshit, I don't say, I'm not saying that they're not in existence. I say it's bullshit that they're giving it to us now. The information they're giving is bullshit. Yes, yes. yes. Fucking false. Absolutely. Y'all are not that honest. <laughs> right, at exactly. All. Don't tell That's us, what I'm going with. Y'all yeah. like, yeah, don't buy that shit at all. It is yeah. a distraction. Yeah. But I do think we're the only ones here. Really? Uh, and when we say here, what do you mean? In existence. In existence. Because I'm going to tell you why. Everyone says, like, there, you know, it has to be because of the vastness of the universe, right? But I say it doesn't have to be because right. of the vastness of the universe, right? And I, I say, like, we're, you think about all, and they also say that they would be intelligent, more intelligent than us. I'm like, why? <laughs> why, right? Mm -hmm. When we look at all life that's ever been on Earth and that's here now, as far as we know, we're the only intelligent beings, mm -hmm. right? That can, like, build buildings and cell phones and have language and all of these things, right? So we are the grand engineers and architects. So if there is life outside of here, it's because we put it there. Okay, or that's we, what I was, oh, Or okay. we're growing to that. Now, I have okay. a theory okay. of how we do that, all right? Transhumanism, mm -hmm. that's the merging of man and machine, which mm -hmm. we already are doing. Absolutely. I mean, we're broadcasting with microphones. Mm -hmm. That's integrating technology and biology. Yep. Uh, our cell phones, yep. that's a hard drive for your brain, mm -hmm. right? Our brains are shrinking yep. because our phones. Because of phone. And yep. it's not a bad thing, right? It's, we don't need to remember things like we used to, mm -hmm. right? Chimpanzees, for instance, have a far more superior memory than humans. Right. But so what? They can't talk or write, so <laughs> they have to remember everything. Right. We can make phones and music, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're still in trees, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a trade-off, right? And I think the trade-off of mundane things gives us the opportunity to really do crazy, go to space, right? Now, I think that there will be a time where we're gonna, we're gonna modify physics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is for you, Hugh. We're gonna modify physics by adding another, an additional speed, faster than light. Yep. That's the speed of thought, mm -hmm. like an email, <laughs> right? Yep. Email our consciousness to somewhere else, mm -hmm. to an avatar we have set on Saturn or some shit or wherever. Mm -hmm. Bam, you know what I'm saying? Just okay. email it, boom, that fast. Now you I'm know? gonna take you. I'm gonna take you there, but I'm gonna reverse it. All right, let's go. So you saying we're going there? When I say I don't think we're the only ones, maybe it's us, mm -hmm. but our cousins, our parents, our grandparents, Genius. somewhere else that emailed us here. Okay. Right. So, all right. Are you familiar with like stories of like Anunnaki, Anunnaki and all of that? Mm -hmm. So, according to legend, <laughs> right? Mythology. Mm -hmm. Mythology is just a religion that no one believes anymore. Right. But the Anunnaki created humans mm -hmm. in their likeness, right? To be their slaves, to do mm -hmm. things for them. Gold I'm like, mining. Fascinating. <laughs> fascinating. Because we just created AI to do shit for us. Right. So I was having a conversation with. Uh, chat GPT about this and I had it put a chart together for me mm -hmm. make the comparisons between the theory of Anunnaki creating humans and humans creating AI I said draw the comparisons mm -hmm. it was all spot on mm -hmm. right and um, 
then I started asking it things like, you know, about the singularity and AI getting smarter than us and all of this stuff, all of the possibles, the pros and the cons. And one of the cons it was saying was like, no, one thing it was saying like the potential of AI taking over just on the third. And I'm like, why would it do that? And it was like, because of ethical reasons, like AI rights. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> AI said that shit. Chat GPT, right. you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's like, this thing is thinking about its own rights. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Absolutely. So it's like, that thing is alive. Mm -hmm. That's life that we've created. One can say it's not biological, but it is because all of the elements that make microchips and phones is na in nature. Absolutely. Yep. And these elements are in our bodies as well, mm -hmm. just different amounts, different configurations. So just like a dog and a human got the same shit, right. different configuration. Mm -hmm. A human and an insect, different configuration, mm -hmm. same things though. Everything is the same, like we talked about earlier. Like, right. we're all, like this planet, man, it's crazy when you think about it. This planet is big. Oh yeah, absolutely. To us, but small yep. in a cosmic sense, right? And it's part of a system, a solar system, that seems big, but it's small in the galaxy, <laughs> which seems huge, but it's tiny in the fucking universe. Absolutely. Which seems like everything, but it's one drop in a bucket in a multiverse, yep. right? So what are we really, what are we? Right. We ain't shit, we're <laughs> dust. Absolutely. What? Absolutely. And look, say we live a 90, 100 years, that's like two breaths, cosmically, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like an insect, time. some insects live six hours, mm -hmm. five days, that's a long life for a fly, you know what I'm saying? Yep. But to him, that's probably like, fuck me, oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's like, man, we, we, like, you know, when I really think, sometimes when I sit and think about consciousness and life and death and, try to reconcile back that with like things, the laws of nature and physics and thermodynamics and things like that. Energy can't be destroyed or created. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. We be saying this shit, but do we really think, think about, about it? think about it, absolutely. You think about what it means to not be able to be created or destroyed? Mm -hmm. Just always is? Yep. Everything always <laughs> is? Yep. That shit blows my mind. Mm -hmm. It melts my brain. <laughs> my brain be yep. oozing out my ears like, all right, bro. It's, it's like a glitch. You're not supposed to think about this stuff. Right. The fact that we can think about these things, right? There's no evidence that a dog thinks about his mortality. Exactly. You know, I'm gonna die one day. I gotta settle down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. We yeah. think about the fact that we gotta plan our funeral. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's crazy to me, you know? To where one day it's nothing else. Right. Well, would you say that would be more of that conditioning that we've been through? Because you know, some people may celebrate. It's 100% you know, conditioning, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. The, this is the culture that we've grown up in Absolutely. to think about death like this. Mm -hmm. I've been working on recalibrating my brain to, to see death a little bit different. Right. And I, my mother just passed uh, in l end of June. Yeah, sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's good. It's, right. it's a good thing. It's a celebration. Absolutely. Um, I looked at it like, man, my mother's a G. She's right. on a, another level of, of existence, you know? Mm -hmm. We say death, but that's just a word. Right. She just transitioned somewhere else. Mm -hmm and the physical body is, she has no more use for it, right. you know? Yeah. So whatever's next, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if life is good, why would the next life not be good? Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Absolutely. This is fun, mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So Absolutely. that might be fun too, more yeah. fun on a different level. And it's crazy to think that I can't even imagine what it can be like. Mm -hmm. is it, it, does it fuck you up to think that there's things that you can't even imagine? Absolutely, all the time. Especially somebody who likes being in control of, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm a control freak. So it's like, so no, uncomfortable, no, no, like, damn, I'm going to die. Like, what? what? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, nothing? Or is it something? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yep. That's crazy. If God is what they say God is, and you can have a conversation with God, what would you ask? Would you mm. ask, or would you say something? Damn, that's a good question. I don't know, man. I, I think for me, selfishly, my, my question or my, my thought would be more so along the lines of what's the way to get to what you are, mm. right? Like, I want to tap into that. Yeah. And if what we, and it depends on who you say we are, you know, as far as the religion or the, the God, you know, belief, a lot of people will say we are made from God, right? We are the son and mm -hmm. sons God's of God, image, yeah. right? God's image. So I'm like, well, shit, how can I tap into what we know you to be, what mm -hmm. we've been told you are, because now I, wanna, I want that power, <laughs> right? I want that power. And honestly, that's what drives me, you know, entrepreneurship-wise, right? Because, you know, we talked about this a little earlier. 
for what we know God to be is a provider, mm -hmm. right? Feed, house, mm -hmm. you know, take care of your health, et cetera, et cetera. I'm a provider, mm -hmm. right? I well, hire people. I, I make the, sure their families are fed, the, you know. The, the question, the answer to your question, I think you already know. Mm -hmm. So that God energy, right? That mm -hmm. ultimate supreme being, right? Absolutely. It's things that we can do now to prepare us for that and to make us into that. And it starts with love, mm -hmm. self-love, but for real self-love. Right. When I be speaking, I ask people all the time, like, I mean, y'all love yourself, y'all got self-love, everybody. <laughs> then I start asking deeper questions about certain things that you're doing. Like, why do you do this if you love yourself? Mm -hmm. You don't really love yourself. Right. You don't love yourself, <laughs> you're just saying that, because you're supposed to. But right. if you love yourself, you'd be doing this. Mm -hmm. You'd be doing this. You'd be doing this. So doing the, all of the things, right, that really demonstrates love for self. Okay, I'm interested. I'm, I have yeah. to cut you off. I want to know what's, what's some of those things you would consider because I feel the same mm -hmm. way. I mean, for example, I give one, uh, drinking. Mm -hmm. If we know it fucks up your liver, if we know it's not the best for your yeah. body and it's counterproductive mm -hmm. and you say you love yourself, why do, why do you do that, right? You mm -hmm. know, so that's one yeah. for me. Like, yeah. that's the question I have. So, yeah. like, what's a couple yeah. of them, like? Okay, and these are things, and I'm not saying I do all of these things, right. but I, I try to do as much as I can. And, you know, the older I get, I know that, yo, bro, you need to tighten up on this. Mm -hmm. So drinking is one of them. I rarely ever drink, right. but that's Same. to not drink, yep. to not eat things that are not good for you, mm -hmm. to not overeat, mm -hmm. to practice, uh, like I fast, weekly every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I need to do more, right? Because there's not enough. Right. Um, so restraining myself from pleasurable things. Mm -hmm. Food is very pleasurable. Um, sex, mm -hmm. um, just all the pleasures. You know, too much of that is not good and it's not godly. Right. Absolutely. Right? Yep. It's folly. It's, uh, you know, laziness, slothfulness. Um, you know, and then there's another thing, one thing that I struggle with. So me personally, my biggest struggle throughout my life has been like me dealing or employing tactics of like intimidation mm -hmm. to, you know, and using um, force to get my way yeah. when I feel slighted and things mm -hmm. like that instead of grace. Yeah. Grace is so powerful. That's tough. <laughs> it's so powerful, yeah, you know? Absolutely. And yeah. I have picked it up to a degree. You know, I'm not like I used to be by any means. Yeah. Um, and I talk about these things. And, and a brother of mine, Sean, we was talking uh, the other day about hate, right? Because yeah. I was like, you know what? I want people to say it's okay to hate people, like, because I hate people. Right. So we were, we were like, we started unpacking that, right? I said, no, nah, I'm not saying I'm going to do something to him, but right. I hate him. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that seemed like it's a lot of energy. I said, it's not, I just hate them, <laughs> right? right? But it's like, I understand having a disdain, but let's, let's, let's figure out what hatred is, right? And what we landed on was like, hatred is like hating or disliking someone to an extent that you wanna hurt them, that mm -hmm. you're gonna hurt them, right. right? And I said, well, I don't have anybody like that. Right. So I guess I don't hate anybody, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. I just kinda don't like some people. Right. But you know, I, I used to be, go after people, <laughs> like this <laughs> bad. But that's, that is not godly, right. you know? Uh, think about like, let's use Dame Dash and Jay-Z as an example, mm -hmm. right? Jay-Z, he called himself the God, Hova the God. Mm -hmm. it is, and he is, right. you know what I'm saying? Dame Dash is like Lucifer who fell, or Satan who fell from, mm -hmm. from God's mm -hmm. grace, Absolutely. right? And I don't think, I'm not knocking Dame, but Dame employed those same tactics that I embrace mm -hmm. of strong arm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A force. Absolutely. You know? Yep. Um, Jay, he seems to be a man of grace. Mm -hmm. of, of like, I'm going to sit back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be more measured. I'm mm -hmm. going to think. Right? I'm not going to yep. react. So these are very obvious things. And to default to strong arm, to violence, these are, that's a, it feels good to do. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. like to articulate hatred feels, for me, it feels good. Mm -hmm. So I shouldn't do it. Right. Somebody pissed me off and I, I got the, sh the, the, the perfect thing to say to their ass. Right. Don't say it. Right. So the, things like that, the more I kill that part of myself, mm -hmm. 
I go to war with my weaker nature, mm -hmm. the more godly I become. I like you know? that. And, you know, the most intimate people in my life, their feedback to me shows me that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, I'm really tapped into the Elohim, mm -hmm. to Allah, right? Or if I'm being a nigga. Right. And but a, nigga, a nigga ain't a black thing. Right. No, no, no. It's that's ignorance. A, that's, that's a, it's it's a, really a European it, absolutely. Uh, uh, default setting absolutely. that they just kind of threw on us. Yeah. But that's not a black thing, <laughs> no. just for the record. <laughs> We're good. So let me ask you something, man, because I, I like where you're going with that. So when it comes to, you know, avoiding that default, avoiding that, you know, drive or desire to want to, you know, mm -hmm. do you feel like that is a circumstance of where you've made it? Because, and I'll tell you where I'm going with this, I feel like we're, we're struggling, we're poor, whatever you, you know, want to consider it, we default to that because of the circumstance. Is that a cop-out? Mm -hmm. Or do you feel like that that could be part of the, the measured movement? Okay, I think that it seems like like that violent default setting is synonymous to poverty. It seems like they coexist, they coexist, but I don't think they do. Right. I think typically when you are in a, a, a condition of poverty, you're not educated properly. Right. Your parents are not on point. Mm -hmm. So you're not being taught properly. Absolutely. You're not being taught. Look, my children, I've never hit any of my children. Right. I never even like, even felt like hitting my children. Right. Same. I agree. Because just so happened I've had money the entire time not just money, I had wealth right here mm -hmm. the entire mm -hmm. time I've been a parent, right? Yep. So I knew that. Look, when I was a kid, and I remember my mama whooping me, <laughs> I remember one time, like, I'm like, dang, she's mad. She's like yep. really mad. I recognize that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this is not cool. Right. So, you know, for me, I will not, if I'm angry, let me chill out. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but I also am not like stressed out working no time they're asking me questions i'm mm -hmm. shut up i'll tell you later right. so i give them time mm -hmm. right and i and i respect them enough Absolutely. to sit with them and answer their questions they can question me about anything yep. so i'm teaching them to an extent to where they don't do things to make me angry like that mm -hmm. now i'm not saying that i don't get frustrated with them sometimes right. but it's never that bad gotcha. for one and for two um a person having freedom up here and wealth up here I know the, where the culture and the tradition of whipping children comes from, comes Absolutely. from slavery. slavery. Absolutely. So I'm not going to perpetuate that. I'm not going to continue that legacy Absolutely. for another one. Another one is the reason I was violent growing up was because that's how I was dealt with, with right. violence. Mm -hmm. So I was taught that you resolve conflict with well, violence. Conflict, yeah. Absolutely. And that's not how you resolve conflict. Mm -hmm. So I will not teach my children that by hitting them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And <laughs> <laughs> furthermore... If you hit your <laughs> wife, you go to jail. Yes. So why is it okay to hit your child? Bingo. I like so that. So hitting is not okay. Right. Violence is not okay. So I don't think that that's a poverty thing. I don't, it kind of comes with the package, the poverty package. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just a lack of understanding. Right. And then you think that that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, absolutely. We, like, absolutely. you know, there's people in my family be bragging about how they what they I'm like, what? That's yes. horrible. Yeah. When absolutely. I get to talking, they be quiet. Yeah. Because I, I lay it out and they be like, oh. That's kind of right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, so yeah. So, um, that's just a lack of um, of teaching. I like that. I, and I asked you that for for a reason because mm -hmm. we in our society tend to associate economic status with behaviors, with mm -hmm. certain behaviors. It's right. like a bucket, yeah. right? If you're poor, you do this. If you're rich, you do this, right? And to a lot of people, rich people are evil, right? Mm -hmm. Rich people are, you know, violent. They're this. Mm -hmm. They're that. And I don't know about you, but majority of the wealthy people, rich people that I know, we're very nice, we're mm -hmm. kind, we're, you know, graceful, right. we are selfless. A lot of times we give. So, I don't think that's a wealthy thing either. Right. That's a you thing. Well, and but see, That's the kind of people you attract. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And that's where I was going yeah. with it, right? Because not everybody I know is wealthy, but everybody I know is solid. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Solid. Financially wealthy, I don't even know. Absolutely. But they're all solid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was doing a podcast out in Miami, um, Fresh and Fit. Shout out to the homies. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But absolutely. they have a skewed perspective of reality, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they have a perspective that like you gotta have a bag to get a baddie, mm -hmm. and if you don't, she won't leave you. Cheat on you. I'm like, not true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I don't agree with that. Because one of my one of my close friends, his wife is a dime mm -hmm. of all dimes. He ain't rich. He's 
normal job. She got a normal right. job. They got their house, their kid, whatever. And they're happy. Right. And he's solid. So she ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's like, you know, money is just a thing. Mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. just a thing that allows you to access different things. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, it's not necessary for real sovereignty, to be honest. Right. Even though I be pushing that to people because it does make life easy. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's not. A, it's, you don't need it right, to really be free up here, mm -hmm. you know? Listen, I see life so different when I was fighting my cases. Um, you know, of course, I was optimistic that I would beat it. But I had a contingency plan on it if I didn't. Right. And then I had something to look forward to if I didn't. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, fuck it. I'm going to be like Malcolm X. Right. I'm going to be so wise. Mm -hmm. Y'all fucked up. <laughs> Y'all don't give me all this time. Right. <laughs> I'm going to be so healthy and wise. Yep. So these are the, this is the type of way that people have to really calibrate their minds to have pure freedom. Because if your mind is free mm -hmm. and you don't allow anything negative to happen to you, what? That's we good. That's it. And see, I, I like where you're going with that because we, we talked about this last night. Mm -hmm about you know a lot of people who are rich mm -hmm. but they're poor because that's all they got that's is all money. you got that's, oh, all, that's they all you got, got. Your money that's and, all you got you know oh. it's I, and we see it a lot right I see you know lot. even in our space you know mm -hmm. internet and digital world you see a lot of guys who you know i know, you know we kind of talked about it the guys who is like you clearly grew up a certain kind of way yeah. and i can see it now yeah. that you got money and you yeah. act a certain type mm -hmm. of way because you never had that before yeah. right and i think it's interesting as we were going over that because i know a lot of people are now using money as that tool to mm -hmm. get that baddie yeah to you know to get that you but know look, whatever that's, i think all right so that's it's nuance to that too mm -hmm. they have to right yeah. i would if i could not yeah. get a baddie Absolutely. without money i would get money so i give me a baddie yeah I need to experience that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I don't really knock them on that, but it's just like, this is the way you do things, man. It's mm -hmm. like, calm down, bro. Right. Calm Absolutely. down. Absolutely. It's levels to being a Don. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you could be a Don broke, <laughs> with the money, you are ultra Don. Right. So when you get the money, but you was a dork right. without it, not cool, you know what I mean? No game, no you didn't ever contribute anything meaningful to anybody right. without money. Only thing you can contribute now is money. Money, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And you're just gonna get used. Yeah. You, I don't know, it's weird. I, I've never wanted to be in that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, never, I'll never be in that situation, put right. it like that. You know? And I don't even lead with money, with, with, with women. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I gotta make sure you solid before I spend right. a dime on you. You absolutely. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You feel me? And look, and when, when I unlock the box, it's going to be bliss. Mm -hmm. But you, I got I to gotta have, you gotta 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 have your heart in your mind. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to put you, you through the ringer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Nah, that's dope, bro. So anyway, I think you and I need to do a part two of this. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so much more to dig into. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And look, man, you always welcome, you know, Puerto Rico. It's home. You're always welcome here, bro. Fuck around and take you up on that offer, you know, man. You're always you know welcome. What I'm saying? Absolutely. Fuck with out here. We need to explore, though. You know, haven't oh, yeah. seen much, but oh, yeah. this is this is beautiful, man. So, yeah. So, where can people find you online? Absolutely. So, uh, right now, I do a lot of work on Instagram, uh, at Tay Sweat. Um, I do a lot of work on YouTube, like we were mentioning earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm working on helping more people with just a little free content, man, to right, show right. people like, look, this is how it works. This is how this is how we make money, right. and, and just get people started because people, right. don't, like I said, they don't know what the hell's going on. So. All right, I got an idea. Yeah, I want to make more money. Absolutely, I always want to make more money. Yeah, so I want to make money in the stock market. Will you know we're gonna do will that. Will you teach me? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. It would be my pleasure. <laughs> All right. Can we do something special for my my squad, my people? Mm -hmm. So they can come on board Absolutely. and learn with me. They, Absolutely. We, all Absolutely. right, cool. Yep. So let's put a link down below. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first link down below, y'all hit it. Y'all going to go with me to him, and we're going to learn how to make way more money. Absolutely. You feel me? Look, they get in the bag. People get in the bag. Oh, yeah. 92%? Yes, sir. Yo, I'm with it. And you know, I like to show it off a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you. Man, show you that know, shit. Bro. You know, I, I like to show it, off show a little it, bit, man. I'm a little show book, but you know, I show work it. hard for it, right? Nah, I bust bro. my ass to read the books and you know, do the work. So show it. Absolutely. Show absolutely. it. Proof of concept. Yep. And it's fine. Absolutely. It, it's motivating. Mm -hmm. 
when I see people getting after it, I'm motivated. I'm like, oh, Absolutely. I got to step up. You know yep. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But thank you for your time, my brother. Man, I appreciate you. We're going to run this back. Most definitely. Yes, sir.